Hello, so, and welcome to another Vaggie's Beer Review. So, obviously, I changed the name to the channel to the Beer Review, well, Vaggie's Beer Review channel, but it is always Vaggie's Beer Reviews, you know. So, slightly uh, strange for people, but it's just the name of the channel. Um, but in any case, over to Bridlington now, uh, to Bridborough and Taproom, a uh, cracking little uh micro brewery well nano brewery up in bridlington uh next to the seafront you know the weather's getting warmer so if you're in that area go and get yourself a pint get yourself some bottles enjoy some cask and keg in there and let them know raggy sent you and anyway if this is on this is one of his top beers um albeit though there's two raggy beers on, maybe on cask, certainly in bottle, uh, on in the shop. And um, I'm hoping to get uh, some for my wedding, to be fair. Uh, so, yeah, Hoppy and Brid, 4.8% ABV, brewed in Bridlington on the, 20, on the 22nd of December. So, yeah, no slowing down for Christmas. Um... Tropical fruit flavours. So please take care when pouring contains sediment. Best before June the 22nd, 2023. So there you go. Gives you a bit of uh, info. Um, now we had this, I'm not sure if it was on cask or keg or what, but uh, it was bang on at the time. So here we go. Now I'm being careful not to disturb the sediment, just in case there is any sediment. Oh, now I nearly lost the glass then, Jesus. It's been a long day at work. So as you can see, um, it's looking, on the camera, it's looking like a golden pour, slight haze, plenty of carbonation, white head. Tropical aromas coming off that. Oh, now salivating. So um, let's, let's dive in. And uh, while it uh, settles down, we'll have a chat. It's tropical. And there's a flavour as well that's there that I, I, I can tell it's a flavour, but I can't quite um, put my finger on. You know, sometimes you taste something and you're like, what am I tasting? And uh, sometimes you just don't get it. It'll come to me in a minute. So anyway, today, uh, I was supposed to chuck it down today. Thankfully, it did not. I've been on my knees all day uh, planting so um over at the Callum site which is in Newark um I put in a, a like a 100 meter bed last year uh dug out the turf oh it was a swine to dig out bloody tree roots and uh, yeah it wasn't the easiest of jobs in the world to be fair um and I dug the bed out and uh Last year planted it, but you know, being in the middle of a blooming uh, forty-year drought, um, it didn't do so well. You know, the plants didn't do what I wanted. So I've been the last the last two days um, absolutely cramming it full of new plants uh, just to bulk it up. Uh, there's a lot in there already, but it, it, this is just to really. Uh, but obviously, like most things. So it was raining then. Uh, like most things, things have got to grow. You know, unless you unless you spend a lot of money uh, to get instant effect, 
which is what we used to do on the city council when, when they worked for Nottingham City Council. We used to plant beds, but you know, the cost of that beds was uh, eye opening. You know, we used to get the plants at a price which you would not get in shops, even at the best shops, you know, a fraction of the price of or grow our own. Um, oh no, not me, not me specifically, though, but. But so, so I'm, I grow these in, in a formal wedding marquee. Um, <clears throat> and today I've been planting like last two days leucanthemums, um, sal perennial salvias, and lots of daffodils. Daffodils harvested from the woodland. We've got a, we've got a three acre woodland, and I've been taking out the um, daffodils in clumps and they needed to be separated anyway and planting them in the bed and uh, what that does in future years is they'll they'll if you ever you leave daffodils in a bed and you don't cut them down too early let them let them let nature to take its course they'll they'll get bigger and bigger and bigger one turns into 20 you know in years in years added so it's a great way of getting a, a flower scheme for only one lot of work you know it um once you put it in uh, as long as you don't cut them down too soon just let them die and uh, go from there let them go brown and then cut them but um yeah after that you know you've got a, a, a bedding you've got flowers for life and uh, so that's that's what i've been doing the last two days yesterday was absolutely freezing today's it's been sunny been a bit windy but uh, i've been in full winter gear today because i was freezing that much yesterday i'm back in the old thermals back in full winter gear and i've actually been quite warm to be fair so it's been nice yeah. no worse than being cold um and, and wet yeah but yeah cracking day and then i did a couple of hours next door um splitting herbaceous plants and uh for the neighbours, they've got a garden that's like a football pitch. Yeah, it's massive, absolutely massive. And uh, the arse must be worth a million. These are. Um, but yeah, the, um, doing their garden for them and splitting their herbaceous plants and planting it up and, uh, you know, showing them how to. Um, split stuff and make money off it you know by not paying out for more plants and more plants and more plants you know there's so much you, you can do in, in that respect in that side that side of things <clears throat> so yes uh the reason why i picked this out tonight we had this at the uh at the at the tap room and it was amazing um And obviously it's the third birthday of the Bridlington Brewery. You know, I mean, Brid Brewer. Um, and to open up in COVID was uh, a tough old uh, thing. I mean, uh, COVID, well, COVID, and then obviously the recent um, unpleasantness with this blooming government and its stupid decisions. And obviously a crazy world. It's been ultra tough for breweries. Um, and uh, to be doing well, to still be alive, you know, for any brewery to still keep going in this day and age is a good thing. To be brewing regular, bringing out new beers uh, and... Uh, and, ex and, and expanding your brewing and you know to 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 live off it and and, and doing well uh, or at least partly well you know is a good thing i mean i know around us in nottingham we've lost we've lost the brewery we've lost three brewery uh, bottle shops which is really sad um and uh, a lot of breweries seem to have um, contracted uh, not doing cans and bottles, 
just doing cask and keg uh, and that for me is a killer because as a beer reviewer that means where the hell do I get my beers from to review and I, and I do cask and keg reviews but um, I've literally put them down to a one minute review in the pub one because I feel like an idiot um, doing it and two you know when you're with people you don't want to be it's bad enough that I'm on, on YouTube doing my social media stuff when I'm out and about. Um, although, technically, now what I do is I'll do the first one and then I'll take photos and do the rest when I get home. Uh, and again, you know, it um, <clears throat> take photos of the beer. I, I remember what the beer tastes like, in, in a fashion at least. You know, can't always remember every flipping beer, can you? <clears throat> so... Tasting well. A typical raggy review. None of this bloody one minute stuff. Can't be doing, I, I, I'm not really keen on doing short reviews. Never have liked and never will. I don't sit in a pub and drink a beer in a minute. Um, and it's like other, and, 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 and the same as beer reviewers. When I see beer reviewers do a beer review in three minutes, yes, that's okay. You know, we all do what we do. But literally, after 10 minutes, a beer changes. It develops. When the air gets to it, it warms up. Uh, it changes. And, uh, yeah. So some people love this uh, three-minute, four-minute beer review. And I've even, said, I've even seen it where it's been said... Oh, he can, you know, someone can say something in four minutes, but other people take 11. Aye, true. But after 11 minutes, the beer doesn't taste the same as it did after four minutes. So, hence, you know, air changes beer. Same with a wine. Air changes wines. Um, and to enjoy any beer or wine, you don't just neck it. Now my one minute reviews are primarily just to give you a hint of what I've got. I won't call it a full review by no means. But uh, yeah. Anyway. Um, onwards. I've just come off... Uh, Started work at quarter to seven, got home for ten past six. And it is raining. <laughs> I thought I was dreaming it. It's been sunny as hell all day. It's been lovely all day. Not a spot of rain in the air. It's been beautiful to work in. And trust me, you get home, pisses it down. I hope next week that people flock to the seaside. You know, we haven't had a, um, we haven't had much of a spring so far. I mean, technically, um, yeah, technically March is part of spring. Yeah, you won't know. <laughs> It was more like winter than spring this year. Did last year as well, to be fair. Um, it didn't in COVID, which is really weird. In COVID, March was ridiculously warm. It's it's strange how the world, and you know, um, and in COVID, uh, right up until July, it was lovely. the t The temperatures were great. We're outside every flipping day. Uh, I was I was doing like a day and a half a week, and uh, yeah, it was cracking. Bloody hell! I had some beer down there. I must admit, bloody hell! I drank, I drank an absolute shed load in the hot tub. Oh yeah, it's definitely raining. Wow. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, as, as COVID weather goes, it was an amazing time to be off work. 
warm for March. I remember it literally. 13th of March is absolutely baking at work. Uh, we were coming in, doing the gas lamps on Nottingham Park Estate, me and the psycho. Um, and uh, like a day, day and a half, if that, and going home. We were told to do what we needed to do and get home. Surprising how fast you can do your job and get home. He used to take, he, the bloke I worked with used to take two days to do the, to the, do the winding up. We literally did it in about four hours each. So, uh, yeah. I think that's called protecting your job. And uh, was it three days? I'm sure he took three days, actually. Yeah, he really took the nick. Uh, and then when, when COVID was on, there were no issues with any of the lamps. All the lamps were working brilliantly. Uh, and either the lamps were playing well, or there was a lot of kidology going off in the first place. Because, let's be fair, if you're in a job and you're the only one checking that job, you can blow the lamp out, turn the gas off. And then that, that you grow in that day, yeah, it's working. Next day, oh, there's uh, number 50, 62, 79, and 108, and 110. They're all out. Okay. I'll go and do it. I'll go and investigate. And it can take an hour if you really, you know, uh, stretch it out to investigate these lamps, take them apart and all this business. And a lot of that was kidology, you know. It's all good fun. <laughs> but anyway, uh, lovely tropical beer from Mr. Brid Brewer and Tap Room. Uh, and again... And we're about to, yeah, cracking beer. Um, if you can, go down the tap room, go and get yourself a pint of this on cask or keg. Uh, I think, I'm not sure which one it is, to be fair. But both. Um, for me, a good 4.3 out of 5. And, uh, and that's it for this review. I'm now going to walk up the house. I'm going to get on the settee. Uh, because I've done 11 hours. And uh, I'm just going to sit down with the fire on. Because we've stuck, we've got the, we've got the old Cali gas fire out. We haven't got the eating on. We've got the Cali gas fire. It's a lot cheaper than gas. Uh, paying for your gas and uh, funny, isn't it? Uh, and uh, sit there, chill out in the warm, and probably not fall asleep. Or probably, probably try not to fall asleep. But uh, these things happen. Cheers, all. <laughs>